Hi, everyone, and welcome back. We're going to talk about discontinuous measurement. And so this is different than continuous in that we're sort of sampling the behavior. We're not seeing all instances of behavior. So what is it? It's measuring a couple instances of behavior. You break the observation into intervals or moments in time. We want to use this when continuous measurement is not practical and you might have time constraints. I often ask teachers if they can try this because it's much easier to do other things while you do this. Initially, it's pretty difficult, I would say, but once you learn how to do it well, it becomes a lot easier. So this is when you have limited time or attention for observation, multiple clients at once, behavior occurs at a high frequency, so it would be difficult to take a frequency count. So we use discontinuous or interval recording. And so we have three types and I'm gonna talk about each type individually. This is an interval recording sheet that I created. The first thing you need to do is pick your time intervals. And this is gonna be individualized to the student or the behavior that you're working with. And these cannot change. So when you're in baseline from intervention, you cannot change this. You must collect the data using the same type of interval recording and the same intervals. This specific example has 10 second intervals. You can do 30 seconds, you can do 20 seconds, you can do a minute, you can do five minutes. It just really depends. The smaller they are, the better the picture of behavior. The bigger they are, the easier it is to do and the less data you're collecting. You're gonna look at that interval from, from, the, from the zero, zero to 10 seconds. And you're gonna mark, did behavior occur or did it not? And there's some rules with that with partial, whole, and momentary time sampling. And we'll talk about each one of those individually. But you mark down. And then once you mark it down, you're done and you wait for the next interval. And from 10 to 20, or 19 did a behavior occur. And so you can set your watch so it, every 10 seconds it buzzes, or you can do different things with timers to help you, or you can just take a watch or start my stopwatch and put it next to my data sheet. So I'm just watching the time. So I constantly know when we're moving into a new interval. So 10 seconds is really the smallest anyone ever does. I've never seen someone do five. So 10 is really small, very time intensive, almost as good as taking continuous measurement. And then I've seen, I've done 10 minute intervals before, so you can make the intervals really big if you need things to be easier. So most data sheets for this interval recording is gonna be long, wide, like it goes this way in a length landscape. <laughs> so I, you can use either, nothing changes about this, but it, it's just what you're going to see if someone hands you a data sheet. So you write down from zero to 10 seconds, did it occur? From 10 to 20, did it occur? And all you're marking is a yes or no. You're not marking anything else. You're not marking a frequency. You're not marking a duration. You're not talking about latencies, just yes or no, X or check, zero or one, Y or N. People use different symbols to do this. And so that's part of the reason why it's a lot easier. So why we use this? We use this because we're, we only want to measure some instances of behavior. So we're not measuring all instances, but it is just a lot easier. It breaks our observations into moments or time segments. We're looking at whether behavior occurred within that small time interval or not. This is used when continuous measurement is not practical. Really high frequency behavior, you have to do other things. You want to observe many people at once. A lot of times I'll introduce a partial for therapy. So when the behavior techs are doing therapy, they'll also take interval recording every five minutes. It helps us track behavior throughout the session, but isn't so time intensive to do frequency or duration on a behavior if it's frequent. If it's not frequent, they can probably do that during therapy attack. But if it's frequent behavior, it's almost impossible to run therapy and take the data at the same time. So then we introduce a five-minute interval system for our data collection. 
We have three different types, partial, whole, and momentary time sampling. So we use it when there's limited time or attention for observation, when there's multiple clients at once. So you need to, when behaviors occur at a high frequency, we need a general trend the exact count is not as important partial interval recording is the one you'll use most often most people are taking partial when they say i'm doing an interval recording okay so you get to mark yes if the behavior occurs at any point in the interval it doesn't matter if it's a second if it's the whole interval if it's half the interval it's always going to be a yes if you see the behavior so the second you're in your interval, let's just say we have these five minute intervals and within three seconds you see behavior, you mark yes and you're essentially done for the rest of the interval. You don't need to record anything because it's already a yes. Whether they behave more or not isn't going to change anything in that given situation. What partial unfortunately does is it overestimates the frequency of the behavior because you're marking yes in this interval even if you see one second of behavior. You get more yeses than you would get no's and so it's an overestimation of behavior. Keep that in mind when you're choosing to use it. It's really good for monitoring high frequency behaviors to decrease. When you have high frequency behaviors you probably want to mark partial. And so you mark yes during partial if you see behavior at any point in the interval. If you have a whole interval where you see zero behavior, then you would mark a no or an X. Check for yes, X for no. Sometimes it's zero for no and one for yes. And sometimes it's just yes or no. The strengths and weaknesses of this, it's used for decreasing high frequency behavior. Interval recording is efficient for capturing high frequency behaviors like hitting or shouting. It captures all occurrences within an interval. Even if there's multiple behaviors happening in one interval, the interval recording will mark as one occurrence. So that's how the overestimation occurs and it's less precise. And if you took frequency, you would capture that it only happened once, not within the five minute period. You lose that data of once in a five minute period with this. So that's how it's overestimating and that's how you're losing data. That's why this is just continuous. Well, just doing a frequency count would be considered continuous. So here's some good behaviors to use for partial interval. It's really good to take tantrums can really work on this one. Self-injury, aggression, property destruction, disruptive vocalizations. Those can be very high frequency behaviors. Whole interval recording. So whole interval, it's the same data sheets. Those data sheets I showed you, you could use it for any of these. You divide your intervals into some sort of standard time period, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then you're going to mark yes if the behavior occurs through the entire interval. If the behavior stops at any moment, it's a no. This underestimates behavior. An example of this, if the behavior occurs through the whole interval, you mark yes and if it stops. So if you're watching the behavior for a couple, it's a five minute interval and you, the behavior is going, 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 and you're waiting, is this whole, is this a yes, is this a yes, and then it stops for one second, you write no, and you're done. Even if the behavior starts up again, you're still done. So that's how it could save time. With this one, you want to mark yes if it occurs a whole interval without stopping, and then if it stops at any moment, or if you see no behavior, it's a no. The second you see the behavior stop, you're done with that interval, essentially. If you're, you know, at the very start of the interval, it's a no, even if the behavior starts two seconds after. So that's how it underestimates behavior. So you're, even though you might, most of the interval they engaged in behavior and the two last seconds they did not engage in behavior, you're going to mark that as a no. It's an underestimation of how much the behavior is occurring. So whole interval strengths and weaknesses, when you want to increase behaviors, it's the off can be the better choice. It's really good for behaviors you want to see very long, like staying on task. 
It shows sustained engagement. It can show participation in positive behaviors. It's a focus on the duration. Partial is more of a focus on frequency. And it's suited for really long behaviors. So you might, these are things that you might want to use whole for sitting in, sitting in seat during class. So saying focus on the assigned work on task behavior, use this as on task behavior, group participation, staying attentive and participating in group activities, and then walking in line appropriately, lining up and walking with the class in a quiet and orderly manner. Momentary time sampling is our last one. It's my favorite. It is also the least precise, but it is my favorite. This one's the easiest for me. When I do school psychology assessment, part of the law for assessment is that no matter what, even if you're looking at a learning disability, you still have to observe the child. Learning disabilities, we determine a kid has a learning disability through mainly large-scale uh, measures. Normative testing is when you're comparing them to a group representative of the whole United States. So you look at their processing, their cognitive ability, different things, and you say, yes, their processing is low enough to qualify for a learning disability. So though the classroom observation is really important for any child in psychoed assessment because it helps us develop goals and shows us where they're functioning in the classroom, it's not crucial to eligibility for a learning disability. But so I use this because this gives me the best information about the child. And I usually do on task behavior. So it's kind of it allows me to rule out ADHD because ADHD and learning disabilities are comorbid. They often are tied together. But you can use it for lots of things. I also use it when I need group data. You pick a certain time within the interval and you don't change that. For example, if you're doing a 10 second interval, you might choose the last two seconds. It gets that seconds gets bigger as the interval gets bigger. So 10 seconds, I would look at the last two seconds of the 10 second interval. For if I was looking at 30 seconds, I would look at three seconds. If I was looking at a minute, I might look at the last four seconds. So you look at this set time. So you don't have to do anything until that set time. So you're watching your clock and you get down to, you're doing 10 second interval between um, seven and nine or eight and 10. It just depends on how you're going to write your intervals. You look up at the child or the person you're observing. If they're engaged in the behavior, it's a yes. If they're not engaged, it's a no. So you do not have to look at them for the rest of the intervals. When I need teachers to take data, this is what I give them. And I give them like a five minute interval. So every five minutes, their phone goes off and they look at the child and mark yes or no for behavior occurring. It's very easy for them to do for like an hour a day or so. And it gives me a sampling of what's going on. Mark yes if the behavior is happening and no if it's not within that um, specific moment. This can under or overestimate. It just depends. You're like sampling the smallest amount of time for whether behavior is occurring. So it's the least precise of all the different types of data collection we're talking about. This is so easy to use while multitasking. I use, I often for on task, off task, there's a whole app called Boss that has this all built in and then it makes you a fun little chart and stuff. And it, they also have sensory behaviors in there. It's a really cool app that I highly encourage you to look at. It does cost, I think, like $25, but that's lifetime. So you get it forever. It's so much less time consuming whenever I have a lot of stuff going on doesn't require watching the entire interval. So you can do other things during the intervals. You know, with a 10 second interval, it is easier than doing other types, but um, you can't do a lot. Oh, you can take ABC data really easily, even if you have a 10 second interval. If you have a long interval, you can definitely do lots of other things while waiting for your timer to go off. Works well in really busy environments where there's lots of people, lots of things going on. And then the best part about this is you can do group. So especially with research, this is how I take group data. I do a lot of on-task behavior for full class. I have done up to 15 kids. It takes some time to be that good at this. But essentially, just give yourself two seconds for each child. And so if you want to look at 10, 10 kids, then make a 20-second interval. So you just label them however they're sitting. I try to put them in that row, in that space. You can probably do five if they're moving around. 
you just go like student A, like Emily. Emily, is she engaging or not? Yes or no. And then you move to Tom. Is he engaging or not? Yes or no. Every two seconds, you take data on each student. Then it recycles. Is Emily engaging in behavior? Is Tom? It's perfect for looking at on task behavior for a whole class. And so that's how you do group. You could do, if they're moving around during recess, you could probably do like maybe five or four, but you have to go find the kid. You have to track the kid with your eyes each time. So if they're moving around, you need to look at less kids. So you want to use it for on-task work during independent work. Participation in group activities is great. Engagement with their materials is great when they're using iPads or learning resources. This is a sample of an actual data sheet for interval recording. So it's on task behavior. We're looking at teacher. These are the behaviors that you're saying yes to. Looking at teacher while she's talking, talking to teacher or looking at assignments. So anything else would be a no. That's clear. They didn't put whether it's partial, whole, or momentary here, but you would write that down. Like I'm taking partial or whole. You're doing a one minute interval and you have 10 minutes total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is how we calculate the data. So you can see that first interval, we'll just say, let's say she took partial. The behavior did not occur during the entire interval. Now in the second interval, she saw behavior at some point in that one minute period. We don't know if she saw it most of the one minute period, half of the one minute period or what, but we know she saw something, the observer. Third minute, we saw something. Fourth minute, we saw some behavior. Five, there was no behavior. Six, we saw some behavior. Seven, we saw no behavior. Eight, we saw some behavior. Again, could be a second, could be the whole interval. Nine, we saw some behavior. And 10, we saw no behavior. Yeah. How you calculate or talk about these interval systems is you count how many pluses you have over the total intervals. We have six pluses. So six times we saw behavior during an interval. And we have 10 intervals. So it's six divided by 10 and you multiply that by 100 to get your percentage. So the t student was on task six out of 10 intervals. So 60% of the time. When you come back tomorrow, if you start your intervention, you do exactly this and we can compare that 60% to the new percentage to see if the intervention is working. This is a chart that breaks it down for you. Whole is recorded behavior occurs at any time for the entire interval. It's great for increasing behavior, show sustained, en sustained engagement. So if you want to see really long engagement, you might choose this. It underestimates behavior and it's not ideal for brief or infrequent behaviors. And then partial recorded behavior occurs at any point during the interval. It's good for reducing behaviors, efficient for high frequency behaviors, and does not show duration at all. Momentary time sampling, record if the behavior occurs at any moment at the end of the interval or throughout. Easy while multitasking, less time consuming and great for groups. And it may miss behavior between checks and can over or underestimate behavior. Okay, thank you. I'll see you next video.